What is Google ATAP? And who is this small band of pirates trying to do epic sh**? ATAP. A small band of pirates trying to do epic shit. Let's find out what kind of epic sh** Google's R&D department, otherwise known as the Advanced Technology and Projects Group, is working on. Before selling Motorola off last year, Google decided to keep this unusual R&D group led by Regina Duggan, a former DARPA director. At the time, the group was working on two things, the first being Project Ara, a modular Android smartphone platform that could have different phone configurations. Essentially, it's a frame with modules that can be configured like a set of Legos. It's the hardware equivalent to software development, letting you decide how your device works. You connect the processors, the speaker, and even the camera, becoming the hardware equivalent of the PC modular platform. And it's actually launching in Puerto Rico later this year. The second thing is Project Tango, which is a tablet that knows where it's at in space and time, using computer vision to create a 3D model of the environment. This year, it's launching as a separate division. But ATAP isn't your traditional secretive R&D group. It's research and development done Google style. So let's find out what they've been working on. So traditional R&D within companies follows a very linear path. It starts with basic research to applied science and then finally to the product. But it's a very slow, iterative process. Within Google, the teams are kept at a startup size, which is less than a dozen people per project. This keeps them fast and agile, but at the same time when they discover something, they're able to call on over 500 outside contractors and 30 universities to give them scale and expertise. The universities provide expertise when questions of science come up, like questions of nature or questions of procedure basically the whys and the hows. Then when the science is figured out, the ATAP group contracts with outside tech companies to give them the scale and expertise they need to bring the product to market. But this group is all about trying to do epic sh**. It runs 9 or 12 concurrent projects with a strict two-year deadline. After two years, the project is either transferred to Google, spun off as an independent company, refreshed with a new team, or it's completely killed. The reason for this is, given the pace of change in technology, either the science or the market will pass you by if you don't move fast enough. So at Google I.O. a couple weeks ago, this group announced four things that keep Android at the cutting edge of wearables, security, and content. Today, security is a problem that places a lot of the burden on the user who has to remember pins or passwords. Project Abacus tries to solve this problem by moving the burden to the device itself. It starts by viewing security as a range of authentication options that all don't require the same level of privacy and protection. For example, you may need one level of security for gaming, for browsing, for shopping and then for banking. Project Abacus does more than rely on your fingerprint or your PIN number. It analyzes the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you type and the way you move through your device. And security actually increases when you combine the different options. A multimodal security model that uses all these things is 10 times more secure than something that just relies on your fingerprint. And the good thing is current flagship smartphones today already have the technology to do a lot of this analysis. So after a software update with Project Abacus, essentially you become your password, but the project won't be ready for at least a year. The second thing the ATAP team announced was Project Vault, which is a mini computer that fits into a micro SD card slot. Because the information on the chip is never exposed to the device, it can be used for secure communication between two different devices and for storage. Two users can communicate end-to-end -end without exposing anything to the host systems. An ARM processor runs a real-time operating system, both NFC and an antenna are used for authentication, and you have 4 gigabytes of isolated storage. All the host system sees is just regular storage with a master boot record, a file allocation table, and an artificial disk label. All the other blocks are marked as bad so that the host system can interact only with a single read and a single write file for input and output. This also makes Project Vault operating system agnostic so that if you have an SD card slot, you're good to go. Now Project Vault is already dev kit ready and an enterprise version is already being tested internally within Google right now. Now let's talk about wearables. The problem with wearables today is the input method. Smartwatch screens are approaching the limits of human interaction, so there needs to exist other input methods, such as voice and gesture. So the Project Soli team thought, what if your hand can be a complete self-contained interface control for wearables? 
all physical controls replaced by your hand. Ten months later, they created a tiny but powerful radar sensor that captures motion in 3D space while being small enough to fit on a wearable device. It runs at 60 hertz, capable of capturing 10,000 frames per second. And at Google I.O., they gave a live demo of the Doppler and Spectrogram signals. The data is interpreted as gestures, and the device directly maps the motion of the hand to move a ball or scroll through a screen. They're finalizing the developer board and API for a release later this year. Now, Project Jacquard actually makes your clothes smarter. The global textile industry sells over 19 billion garments a year, and by combining technology with fashion, they have the potential to make tech beautiful. The team started by examining the similarities between fabrics and touch screens. The initial idea was to weave multi-touch panels into fabrics to make a cloth that was responsive, inductive, and interactive. But the biggest challenge was figuring out how to use existing production techniques and supply chains to bring the products to market. So the group had to adapt to the textile industry. The conductive cloth has to withstand the stresses that come with manufacturing and and cleaning your clothes. And also the choice of colors and materials has to be complex because we all have unique styles. So the Jacquard team invented their own yarn. They weaved metal alloys into a strong silk yarn in such a way that the information could output to a digital device. Now fabrics can sense touch, and this technology can be used in everything from couches to pillows to even smart toys, so that now for the first time, you're Clothes, your toys, your products can sense touch. It's so promising that Google partnered with Levi's to make tech-infused fabrics that are 85% cotton and 15% Project Jacquard. But for this to work, the Android developer community needs to support smart cloth functionality. And finally, Google is pioneering a new form of content, Spotlight Stories. This is a new format of interactive stories that only works on mobile because it depends on the user. The story depends on the viewer as they control what they see based on where they aim the screen. In these videos, the control is given back to the audience. The audience is essentially controlling the camera. Now, Google Spotlight Stories are live today for Android, but it works best on Nexus and Motorola devices. And iOS and YouTube app support will launch later this summer. But the value of this platform really depends on the content creators. Justin Lin, a Fast and Furious and Star Trek III director, is producing a five-minute live-action Spotlight Story about an alien attack on LA. For this project, Google helped build a custom rig. For you video geeks, this rig has four Red Epic Dragon cameras with 8 millimeter fisheye lenses recording at 6K resolution each. But for this to work, your phone needs to stream, decode, and render the video in real time. And no phone today can handle three 4K video streams at once. So Google built a dynamic spatial tiling system that processes only what's visible and adapts to a device's performance in real time. For audio, they developed a full sphere surround field for dynamic virtual sound. Here's a little preview. Now, all companies have R&D divisions that work on future products and technologies, but most companies keep their development secret until they're ready for release. But Google is approaching R&D differently by researching and developing large-scale projects, by partnering up with tech companies, with universities, and with the Android open source developer community. So perhaps the most unique part about the ATAP team is how they keep themselves small and nimble enough to move fast, but open and transparent enough to inspire a community to do some epic shit. So thank you guys for watching this video. I just wanted to get a little change of scenery. Let me know what you guys think about the style, the format. Uh, hopefully producing future similar videos in this way. Hope to get back on track to start producing again. I know I've been away from YouTube for a while working on a lot of other projects and stuff. I'm just trying to get caught up with everything, but I'm really glad to be back on the channel. I'll be doing a video that sums up a little bit more of Google I.O., um, Google's Fi project, the new cell phone service that they have, and Apple's recent WWDC conference, just giving you guys the highlights and summaries and my thoughts and opinions about it. So uh, thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. Please share this video with anybody who might be interested. And as always, thank you for being with us here as we continue to explore how technology changes the world. Done, finally.